Hey everybody and welcome to another video from the Electronic Armory. In this video we're going to cover Kotlin data classes. Data classes are very similar to Java's POJOs or plain old Java objects with the added benefit of not having to write a lot of code. They're much more powerful than that though. They're very powerful but they're also very easy to use. Let's give you a quick example of how easy they are to use and we'll use these a lot as we continue our class on Android development with Kotlin. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do in Android Studio is I'm going to open up these folders so we get a nice layout of our application. The first file I'm going to open is our main activity. Now for this one we're going to create one of these data classes and so I'm going to right click on our package up here. I'm going to go to new and I'm going to select Kotlin file slash class. So go ahead and click on that object and then we're just going to call this person because I'm going to use a data class that represents a person. Switch the kind to class. As you can see, we have other ones in there as well. And we're going to create this person class. So hit OK on that one. And now you can see that we have just an empty Kotlin class here. And now to create a data class, what we're going to do is add the keyword data in front of us. Now immediately the compiler will say that this is an error because we need to have a constructor. Now data classes require the constructor be written right here and so as we create a parenthesis here we can start filling in parameters that are going to be part or members of our person class. So if you think about a person, a person obviously has different attributes like a name and an age and a birthday so we're going to start there and I'm going to use the VAL val keyword for this and this is going to represent the person's first name as a string and then of course we're going to make a last name and of course some people have multiple last names and a middle name but we're going to keep it simple for this example and then after this we're going to have a variable that represents the age but age changes and so we might not want to use the value keyword val because val means that those are going to be essentially constants or variables that are immutable, that they don't change. So usually a person's first and last name don't change, so we'll just keep this example simple for right now. But again, our age will change, so we'll make that a variable. And this is of course going to be an int. And then finally we can put in a little bit more complex items in here, which is, uh, I'll put in a val, and this is going to be the birth date and birth dates do not change, so that's fine. And this is going to be a Java util class type. So this comes from the Java util package, of course, and we're just gonna set this as type date. And of course, it automatically imported our Java util package up here, and that's great. One thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have this class be serializable. You'll see why in our next video, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make this change now. And what this is essentially saying is that we can write this class essentially either to disk or to storage in some form, and that's what we mean by serializable, and then we can recall it from disk. Once we have this person object in here, we can then go into our main activity, and I'm gonna create some room under our onCreate, and if you remember onCreate gets called when our activity gets created and, and set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a person object of type person and I'm going to set its constructor here. And so you can see we have a constructor automatically and I'm going to hit enter on that. Now for this one it's going to require me to enter in those parameters. So as the first parameter here is going to be the first name. And you can see that Android Studio pops up this little helper to remind me what that variable parameter is going to be named. So in this case it's first name. And then as I end the double quotations, hit a comma, it's gonna ask me for that last name. Pops up a little nice pop-up to help me, to remind me what that's going to be. So we're gonna do this one, and then it's asking for an age. Of course, that's going to be an integer. Let's say we're about four years old, and uh, for the birthday, I'm just gonna to do today's date, and so what we can do is just pass in a constructor date now Android Studio doesn't recognize date because it's a type of another class here and so it's going to ask me if I hold down the option and hit the enter key it'll auto import that. It's going to ask me which one because there's multiple versions of this date class. There's one from the util package that we're going to use and then there's one from the SQL package that we're not interested in so go ahead and select that one. Alright great and so if you remember in our person object here 
we have a first name on that. So if I do person dot first name and try to set that equal to something else, you'll see that we get an error saying that it cannot be re reassigned. And if you remember going back to our person object here, we set those as values. So if I set age to a value and we go back here, of course I'm gonna erase this and just say age. If we set age to, I don't know, 10, we try to change that, you can see we get the same error, but as soon as we change that back to a variable and go back, now we're able to set our age. And what the data class is doing under the hood is allowing us to set that or it's creating a setter for that particular attribute of our class. So we can change anything that has a particular variable on it, or we can simply do a getter on this. So if I wanted to print this out or something, I can do that. I just can't change it. Okay, so undo that. And that's essentially what our data class is and how we create it. Now there's a couple things that the data class is doing under the hood besides getting our getters and setters. It's also creating an equals function that allows us to compare two person objects. It's doing that automatically. The other thing that it's doing is creating a copy function. So if we wanted to copy it, it'll do a copy for us and we can actually change the different values when we do the copy. So maybe I'm making a copy of a person and I wanna make that into a child who shares the same last name, I can change the first name when I copy it. But most importantly and most useful for me anyway is the two string function that it automatically generates. So we put a tag here and then for actual log statement, we can do person to string. That'll generate a nicely formatted log statement in our log when we print it out to here. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. All right, once our application launches and we can see it here in our emulator, I'm going to go down to our log cat and make sure that we have our application selected or our device selected here and our application selected here. And if we look for our EA, we can type in the filter here to filter those down. And so we can see that this is our print statement of our person objects. It's a nicely formatted way of displaying out all of our attributes in that person class. So a very interesting and nice way to represent data in our Kotlin application. So I hope you found this useful. In our next video, we'll take this to a whole new level and start introducing you to additional activities. Make sure you subscribe to the video to see more Kotlin videos. Give this a thumbs up if you wanna see more of this type of video. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about data classes or anything Kotlin related. Share this video if you think it'd be useful to others. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.